Hello everybody, Hoodie Coco here. Instead of one of my overlong and overly pedantic G.I. Joe toy reviews, this time I wanted to do something different and something we haven't done in quite some time. This is my top 10 worst science fiction based G.I. Joe action figures of the vintage era from 1982 to 1994. As you are probably aware if you follow this channel for any length of time, my preference is for G.I. Joe action figures and vehicles based on real world military designs. Designs, but there has been science fiction in G.I. Joe going all the way back to 1982 at the beginning of the real American hero era. That gives us a lot of G.I. Joe science fiction toys to look at, and some are better than others. I must add the caveat that I am a G.I. Joe fan. I like G.I. Joe, so finding the worst of it is a bit of a challenge, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to do it. It's like trying to list the worst Billy Wilder movies. Even the bad ones are still pretty good. I think the worst G.I. Joe action figures are better than some of the best action figures and other toy lines. There are some that won't appear on this list, such as the G.I. Joe character Sci-Fi, that's too easy, also Street Fighter 2, which I don't count, and anything after 1994. Let's give it a try. These are my top 10 worst G.I. Joe science fiction action figures. Number 10. 1989 Annihilator Annihilator was one of Destro's Iron Grenadiers, and that's a good club in which to be a member, but Annihilator stands out among the other Iron Grenadiers, and not for good reason. He has bizarre colors with orange and purple that do not match the Iron Grenadier's usual black, red, and gold. He also has a little helicopter backpack that bends the laws of physics. We top it off with a strange looking flat, long helmet that no real human head would fit in. Hey, maybe it's Darkwing Duck in that uniform. Number 9. 1992 Toxo Zombie Yes, there were zombies in G.I. Joe. And why not? Anything can be in G.I. Joe. So let's throw in unicorns and leprechauns for good measure. The Toxo Zombie is lauded as one of the best figures from the Eco Warriors subset, and it's easy to see why. It's a zombified Toxo Viper version 2, and the zombification process has added a lot of detail and paint applications. Strictly from a design and sculpting perspective, this figure may be on a lot of fans' top 10 best science fiction figures lists. For me though, I'm not a fan of zombies stories in the first place. I'm not quite ready for G.I. Joe to fight zombies. So going all in on the zombie concept with the extra detail and the extra paint applications just makes this one harder for me to look at. Number 8. 1984 Deep Six Deep Six may not be an obvious choice for a science fiction action figure since he is wearing a deep sea diving suit that is somewhat based in reality. First, it's the clunkiest action figure in the entire vintage era. The figure has a water diving gimmick that eliminates almost all of the articulation. He's also the driver of a very sci-fi vehicle, the Shark Flying Submarine. For me, it would be hard to not include Deep Six on this list. He's hardly an action figure, he's more of a plastic paperweight. It's an early example of a gimmick being given priority over other play features such as articulation, and we will see that again in this list. Number 7. 1986 Dr. Mindbender this one is difficult to include on the list because Dr. Mindbender is an essential character. He's very important to G.I. Joe lore. He started as Cobra's interrogator and became the mad scientist. Dr. Mindbender is responsible for many other science fiction elements in G.I. Joe, but that's not why he's on the list. He's on the list because, well, just look at him. He's bald, he has a monocle, he's naked from the waist up, he wears a cape and a codpiece. He's a mad scientist emphasis on MAD. The inclusion of Dr. Mindbender signaled that there would be more science fiction in G.I. Joe. The second version of Dr. Mindbender in 1993 had bright, obnoxious colors, but at least he put a shirt on. Number 6. 1988 Super Trooper Super Trooper was exclusively available as a mail-away figure. He was not available at retail. You had to get the figure through the mail. And the appeal was based on the idea that children were attracted to shiny things 
and that does work on me. I like shiny things. He is so shiny that he is ill-equipped for his primary function of penetrating deep into enemy territory. Any glint of sunlight, or any light, will give away his position. Since the enemy will inevitably see him, he can defend himself with his chrome shield. Yes, Super Trooper was G.I. Joe's first attempt to rip off Captain America. Sergeant Savage was a bit more on the nose. The mold for Super Trooper was used to create another action figure, Rapid Fire, in 1990, and that figure has its own issues, but it's less sci-fi than Super Trooper, so it doesn't make this list. Number 5. 1993's Cyber Vipers. Cyber Viper is from the Mega Marines subset, which was created to add more science fiction to G.I. Joe, and that's why he's not the only Mega Marines figure on this list. The obnoxious colors on this figure don't help, but the main problem is it's a patchwork. Nothing goes together. The legs don't match, the arms don't match, it looks like three or four action figures were thrown into a blender, and this is what came out. Add to that a truly bizarre helmet that I don't think any human being would really wear, and Cyber Viper just has to be on this list. Number 4. 1993 Armor Tech Destro. The infamous year of 1993 strikes again. Surprisingly, this is the first Star Brigade figure on this list, but it won't be the last. All of these Star Brigade Armor Tech figures are very clunky, and any of them could have made this list, but the Destro figure won out. You have the limited Armor Tech articulation, another example of a gimmick taking priority over other play features. He has a spring-loaded missile launcher for an arm. It looks like Destro's arm was amputated and replaced with a missile launcher. That's not the only part that was amputated. Destro has a tiny head, much too small for a human head inside a metal mask. That leaves us to speculate that Destro had his head amputated and replaced with a tiny version of his shiny helmet. You don't see a lot of people volunteering for head amputation, but Destro is an innovator. Number 3. 1993 Bio Viper. We are back to Mega Marines. The G.I. Joe Mega Marines subset included a couple mutant monsters, one of which was the Bio Viper. Bio Viper is oversized, clunky, and has limited articulation. It looks like a humanoid bug creature with four long tentacles. According to the final card, the Bio Viper is supposed to be an undersea monster, and those are the tentacles of a giant squid. I think this figure doesn't quite know what it wants to be, and it's a mishmash of several ideas that don't quite fit together. I easily could have included the other Mega Marines monster, the Monstro Viper, on this list, but I just wanted to choose one of them, and the Bio Viper is just weirder. Number 2, 1987 Globulus. Globulus was the leader of the Cobra Law team, the three-pack based on the characters from the animated movie. You probably expected Globulus to be number one on this list, given my visceral reaction to anything related to Cobra Law, but no, there is one action figure that had to be rated higher. Gimmick once again overtakes playability, as this is just half an action figure. The lower half of the figure is a long, bendy tail that doesn't bend well enough to be useful. The top half of the figure is a piece of work too. The sculpting is really intricate and the design is certainly unique, but as with the Toxo Zombie, adding the extra detail and effort to a concept that I find grotesque just makes it worse, not better. It can't surprise anyone that Galobulus is high on this list. I'm not sold on the whole idea of Cobra Law, and Galobulus is that idea run amok. There is one action figure that represents science fiction in G.I. Joe even worse than Galobulus. Before we get to the number one worst science fiction G.I. Joe action figure, here are some honorable mentions. 1994 Ice Cream Soldier, one of the ugliest figures from the vintage era and with the most ridiculous name. As the flamethrower commando, he wasn't quite science fiction enough. 
1987 Crystal Ball the Cobra Hypnotist, although the character is somewhat ridiculous, I actually think the figure design is pretty good, and he's more supernatural than science fiction. 1994 Star Brigade Carcass, one of the lunatic space aliens in G.I. Joe. This figure is absolutely ridiculous, but with the translucent chest that shows the body parts inside and the claw rib cage, it has some minor redeeming features, unlike number one. Number one, 1994 Lobotomax. For me, this is the worst. He was one of three Lunar Ticks space aliens introduced to the Star Brigade subset in 1994. Lobotomax is easily the worst of the three. He has a long bendy neck and a long bendy tail with a fist at the end of it, and these bendy parts never work very well. He has oddly designed feet, which get in the way of each other, so even though he has articulation on the legs, the articulation is hard to use. He's not wearing pants pants, which is disturbing enough, but his head has an exposed brain that's sculpted like a body part that should not appear on a children's toy. The design of Lobotomax could have gone through a few more drafts, and perhaps if the designers had settled on a blank page, that still would have been better. Those were my top 10 worst G.I. Joe science fiction action figures. I hope you enjoyed it, but how can you enjoy it? Your list is different from mine, and some of my worst figures might be on your best list. That is what the comment section is for. Please let me know what are your worst G.I. Joe science fiction action figures. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share this video with your friends. If you'd like to support the channel, I am on Patreon. I'll be back soon with an overlong and excessively pedantic G.I. Joe toy review. Until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.